Oh, hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show off a model that I built just for fun. You know, it was a diversion, but you know, I really love this thing. I think it's really cool. So you start with an image, and the Analytica model processes the pixels to figure out what it's an image of. I implemented this entirely in Analytica. So let's try another image here. Okay, so 82 it thinks it's 82% chance it's a fire truck, and 12% chance it's a school bus and stuff. So it's, it's just fun playing with this thing. A lawnmower. I guess that was too easy. Kids soccer game. Well, there is a soccer ball there. A maypole. Hmm. How about Pumba? So a warthog, wild boar, hog. Yeah, yeah. Wow, huh? Huh? Okay, one more. Beach volleyball game. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> volleyball swimming trunks. <laughs> that that makes sense, even though it's only point zero zero point four percent. When I've shown this to people, I've invited them to find their own image to try. And that's why I have so many images on my image pull down there. So let's do that now. So let's see here. What should we look for? So how about a tent? Okay, there's. let's pick one with some background. So I save it to my image directory. And then in the model, I press the refresh image list button. And now it's in the pull down. Select it. Okay, yeah, it did well on that one. Okay, so how does it do it? Well, as you might have guessed, it's a deep learning model. I, I do want to emphasize a couple things. So first, this is not something I came up with. The model here is called a residual network, and this particular model is a standard benchmark in the machine learning community. It's known as the ResNet 18 model. The residual network was introduced by Kai Ming He, Xiang Yu Zhang, Xiao Qingren and Jian Sun of Microsoft Research in Asia, and they swept the 2016 ImageNet competition with this architecture. I put a link to their paper in the blog and in the YouTube notes. What's new here is that I think I'm the first one to actually do something like this entirely in Analytica. This is really not at all typical of what Analytica is designed for and what people do in Analytica. And, you know, it Analytica is not the platform of choice for this stuff, at least not today. Perhaps, maybe at some point in the future it will be. You never know. But anyway, and I started with pre-trained weights for this network. So um, let's, okay, let's dive into the model details now. There's a series of network layer modules. Each one's output supplies the input to the next. At the start, it reads the image file. It resizes and crops it to a standard 224 by 224 size. And then it explodes the into RGB pixel values like you see here. So red, green, blue. The values are suitably scaled to have a mean of about zero. And this is what feeds into the first layer of the network. So it pumps those RGB values through an array of 2D convolutions, followed by a batch norm, an array lu, and a 2D max pooling layer, which computes the output of this pre-layer. So at this stage, it reduced the dimensions to 56 by 56. But now, instead of R, G, and B, it's converted these into 64 separate features. I put a visualization node here where I create a grayscale image from each feature plane so I can stare at these and try to make sense of what kind of low-level features this layer is detecting. Okay, these functions like conv, batch norm, ReLU, max pull, and so on are all user-defined functions that I created in Analytica. So for example, let's go to my conv2d function, the 2d convolution. This main line right here is a pretty straightforward expression of a 2d convolution in standard Analytica syntax. The other layers all have a repeated structure with two blocks in each. Inside the first block, you can see these short circuit pathways from input to output that are labeled downsample residual. Those short circuit pathways are what defines this as a residual network, and they turn out to help tremendously with gradient propagation during training. You can see the hook at all paper for details on that. But again, all these nodes are just using the same UDFs again, like conf2d and so on. At the very end, I end up with outputs for each of the 1,000 categories that this model was trained for. 
Here are the final outputs. They're all predicted probabilities for each of those categories. I've used a cell format expression to highlight the top five categories with yellow and the top category in green. Okay, and then to get my final result view, I just pull out the sorted top five categories. So I hope you found this to be a fun diversion. So in the interest of keeping the video short, I'll stop here today. And as usual, thanks for watching.